Hi, I'm Jason Lemmis, service technician with Arctic Mechanical. Today we're going to show you how to do a proper maintenance on a HVAC unit. Today we're just going to start. First thing you want to check is the voltage. Verify you have voltage. Check your fuses. So that's what we're going to do. First thing we want to do is verify our voltage to the unit. Make sure our fuses are good. Verify we have power. Then to safely work on the unit, we have to just de-energize it. And then once again with the meter, make sure that there is no voltage present. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is wash out my coil. So that way whenever I take my pressure readings, I know I got a true gauge of what the actual system pressures are. One thing you're going to want to do is just to make sure that there's no rust or corrosion on the floor of the unit so you don't have any water penetrating in while you're washing, possibly in the store, staining roof tiles or entering and uh, getting on the product. Uh, what I like to do is I like to start from one side and work my way around. Next thing we're going to check is everything in the electrical power. One thing we want to check is to make sure that all the wires are nice and secure, that nothing is going to pull out through the vibrations of the normal work wear and tear. Also, we're going to check to make sure all the connections are nice and snug on our capacitors. Tighten down each lug on our contactors. And we'll also check our contactors to make sure they're not pitted and wearing out. These ones show no sign of pitting. It looks like they've been replaced recently. And then after we've done a complete assessment of all the electrical and the wiring and make sure everything's secure, we move on to the next. Okay, so next we're going to check the capacitor. This capacitor is for the condenser fan motor. It's rated for 5 microfarads plus or minus 6%. So anything 4.7 to 5.3 is within specs. First thing we're going to want to do is discharge it. We're going to ground it out to itself to make sure that there's no stored power in there so it doesn't hurt us while we're disconnecting the wires. Next we're going to disconnect the wires, set our, our meters to microfarads. And then check it. This one's giving me a 3.9 rating, so it's out of specs, manufacturer specs. So that's going to run our amperages higher on our motors and actually make them wear out a lot faster. So at this time, I would recommend replacing it. Okay, so after checking the uh, condition of the blower housing, making sure that the pulley's good, the bearings are fine, checking the conditions of the sheaves and the pulleys to make sure there's no wear and tear in the alignment of the motor and the pulleys, we're going to go ahead and replace, uh, install our pulley back onto the system. At that point, we're going to check to make sure that the tension is correct, that it's not too tight or too loose. Okay, so next we would check the economizer screen if the unit had it. This particular unit does not have an economizer screen. Economizer is used for free cooling, pulling in the fresh air from the outside if the temperatures, the ambient temperatures are low enough. Um, what we would check is to make sure that it functions. We check the louvers, the linkage, make sure that works. They also have filters and screens. Make sure that the filters and screens aren't worn to where things can be sucked inside of the store and then cause damage to the units. Okay, so next we're gonna do an inspection of the filter housing and evaporator compartment. 
Uh, we're going to check the filters and make sure that they're clean. These ones are dated from the last quarterly PM that we did. So on this PM, we're going to go ahead and change them out. Another thing we check is to make sure the evaporator is nice and clean. This one's been maintained very well, so it's clean. If it was dirty or plugged, we would recommend a chemical clean at this time. Uh, we can also check the drain pan from here to make sure that it's clean and that it's flowing correctly. If it was plugged or dirty, we would actually flush it and then install some paint uh, pan tabs to help dissolve any buildup inside of the pan. Also, by flushing it, we'll be able to check to make sure the condensate is flowing correctly and then we'll also use some CO2 to blow out the drains to make sure that there's no plugs. Okay, so next we're going to check the compressor and condenser compartment. We're going to check all the electrical connections and make sure they're fit and snug. They're nice and tight. They're not going to wiggle out during operation. Also check the connections to the compressor to make sure those are nice and snug. Uh, this being a heat pump, it has a reversing valve. And so we check the connections to that. We're also going to test it during its operation to make sure that it's functioning in heat and in cool. I will inspect the condenser. Make sure that I don't see any oil or any corrosion that will show us any signs of a leak. And then also, same on the fittings and everything on your compressor. And then next we're going to check with the uh, unit running, we're going to check amp draws to make sure that the compressor is functioning correctly and the condenser fan motor. And then we're also going to check pressures to make sure it's functioning right. Okay, so now we have our unit energized, we have it in cooling mode. We've got our gauges hooked up to the suction and discharge. We've got 410A in the system, so our pressures are what they should be for the ambient temperature that we have outside today. After that, we're going to check our amperage on our compressor and our blower. Okay, next we're going to check the compressor, indoor and outdoor fan motor amps. We, uh, previously, we verified which wires are going to each equipment. This one's going to the compressor. Our compressor is rated for 15 amps. We're running 9 amps due to the ambient temperatures and being cooler, the compressor is working less hard right now, so that's why it's got a less fan rating. The next one we're going to check is the indoor fan motor. That one's rated for 6.9 amps. We're running at about 5 amps, so that one's running perfect. And now we're going to check the condenser fan motor. Condenser fan motor, we're running 1.5 amps. And that one's rated for 1.5, so it's right there. So at this point, we already identified that we've got a weak capacitor. So we're going to go ahead and replace the capacitor out this time to prevent any uh, further issues later on in the season. Okay, next we're going to check the return and supply temperature differential. We're going to look anywhere between a 18 to 20 degree split. This is the supply vent. Right now we're reading 46 degrees, so we're going to go check the return now. Okay, so this is our return. Our return temperature is 66 degrees. So the supply was 46, our return is 66, we've got a perfect 20 degree split. Now remember, when you're done with your preventive maintenance on the equipment, remember to turn the disconnect back on. I'm Jason Lemons, Quality Assurance Technician with Arctic Mechanical. Thank you for your time and your attention. We'll see you next time.